So this is basically an introduction to uh, this trip I took from Canada to Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, uh, and what it takes to go from the, you know one sort of lesser known area to another lesser known area. Uh, obviously, there's longer flights where you can go, say from Dallas to Sydney or something like that, and that's all well and good. But this is kind of two, you know, like I said, lesser known places. And when you're determined to do it in one fell, fell swoop, what does it take? And for me, it took 29 hours from from door to door, and I'm sure you could do it in maybe 27 or something like that. But but this is this is the journey I took, and so I thought I'd share it. I do have other videos um, on those two places, sort of a just a basic overview of the streets and, and what you can expect if you if you go to visit there and, and you know have a look at those if, if, if that sort of thing interests you. So I am from uh, London, Ontario in Canada, uh, just outside of Toronto. So basically the, the whole thing goes uh, London to Toronto by uh, train and then from there it's Toronto to Dubai uh, in one single flight um, through Emirates um, and then Emirates partners with uh, Fly Dubai and so the, the rest of the way was with that company not, not quite as glamorous interestingly uh, on the way back uh, I fly out of Uzbekistan and they have a direct flight to North America so I ended up doing Tashkent to uh, JFK and then going over LaGuardia and going from there back to Toronto and then actually flying to uh, London uh, after that. So equally long trips. Um, one is at the beginning when you're excited, you know, and the other one is you just want to get home because you don't want to be on a plane. Station. Uh, so this is in March of 2022. You can see it's still wet and snowy out. Um, but yeah, the, the Via Station is, is your typical, you know, medium-sized Via Station where there's basically just seating and places to buy tickets. Um, I decided to do this trip solo. I kind of have a fascination with the former Soviet countries, and, and these are two that I haven't been to and two that are sort of not well-known. Um, but obviously, it's a long journey, and that's what this is about. I, I forget, I think it's like 10 or 12,000 kilometers away. Um, and so there's no real direct route either. They're not the most popularly traveled places. Um, anyway, at, I left at around 3 in the afternoon on a Monday. You'll see that I, I arrive on a Wednesday in the morning there. Uh, but there, the first thing is, is a two-hour train ride to Toronto. They do have flights to Toronto, but it, it didn't really work out well. It's, it's certainly a lot less expensive just to take the train. Um, and then it, so it's a two hour train ride. We pull into V around, I think it's like six o'clock in the evening. So arrive at uh, Union Station in Toronto, it's like around six, and they have a link from Union Station to the airport, which is relatively new. Um, every time I take it, it's not typically busy. And I know when they first started, the price was like $24, $27. Canadian and then it, it dropped it in half and yet it still doesn't seem very busy but it's appreciated my scenario it only takes about 25 minutes um, and then arrived at the airport at this point it's uh, gonna be 6 30 or so it's pretty um, uneventful uh, if you've been to Toronto one thing that Toronto Airport one thing that strikes me is that everything's brutally expensive like even for airport standards uh, with the exception of Subway, and then, there, but there is like all these iPads and a lot of seating and stuff like that. I find that airports, older ones especially like Newark or something like that. Sure, there's I suppose there's seating, but you get to sit at a table or, or something, so you have a surface to put like your stuff on and you know to to set up a laptop or something like that, rather than just you know have it sitting on your on your lap. And then the flight took off as expected on time. And that would have been uh, around 9.15. Uh, and it's a 12-hour and 40-minute flight. was nice enough to be able to fly in an A380 because I, they don't come to Canada very often. This might be the only one uh, with a direct flight to Dubai. 
but it was pretty uneventful. You know, you're sure it's a big plane, but it just looks like a bunch of seats, just like any other plane. Uh, and then, of course, Emirates is pretty good. They feed you nicely and you know, unlimited drinks, and, and uh, you actually get real cutlery and everything like that. So, Dubai Airport is, you know, not terribly dissimilar to other airports. Um, it has that sort of thing where uh, it's, it's half mall, half airport. It's pretty slow. This is still during the pandemic, I imagine, in normal times. It's, it's still, it, it's a bit more busy. Uh, they have the call to prayer, if that's your thing. Um, but, you know, I just killed some time, ate some food, and relaxed. And then the plane uses the, these buses, you know, that you've seen perhaps before, to, to drive you out to the plane. I, I always find that a bit of a pain in the butt. There's always a lot of standing around and stuff like that. Anyway, Fly Dubai is uh, sort of a discount airline, and it's no big deal. It was just, a, just four hours or so. Uh, and that's the final leg to, to Bishkek. Uh, so landing in Bishkek was... Uh, Pleasantly, a relatively modern airport. Um, I've flown at L.C. Smith Terminal in Detroit when it was active, and that place is like a museum compared to this place. Uh, I had the Airbnb schedule a drive uh, to where I was staying, and he didn't speak any English, and he, you know, just inexplicably picked up another passenger. I don't know if she paid or if, if she just tagged along or what um, but the ride was about I want to say like seven dollars US um, and then their airport is actually quite a distance away from the city center and you know it, it, it's hit and miss some places it, it's quite close and whatnot and other places they just opt to just push it way far away and, and then they have a lot of space to move so it was now early in the morning um, and it was a good hour to get to to where we were staying and, and of course the driver drove unlike what you would normally expect in the West and that completed the trip and uh, so the trip took 29 hours and, and like as I said like it's not mind-blowing you know to go to Australia and, and other places like that uh, it is long trips and whatnot but these are two kind of interesting off the the beaten path places like London Ontario and Bishkek and, and that's exactly what it takes to go to there if you're that determined <laughs> 